Well, welcome. I'm here today with Lawrence O'Coley, amateur boxer and biosynergy ambassador. Welcome, Lawrence. Thank you. Lawrence, you're an amateur boxer. Can you tell uh, the audience a little bit about what that means? Uh, an amateur boxer is a boxer who fights to like an Olympic style boxing, and it's um, it's different from professional boxing where you um, only do a maximum of um, three or four rounds. Where in professional you can go up to twelve and win ties that way. Um, being an amateur boxer allows you to partake in stuff like the WSB, which is the World Series boxing, and Olympic Games and Commonwealth Games. So um, it sort of gives you a chance to also do other sort of things where professionals like that becomes your job and that's you know your livelihood. Whereas an amateur you can pursue other endeavours like education and stuff like that. I'm going to talk about your education a little bit later. Um, but one thing that does interest me is the difference in the codes between amateur and professional boxing now, because yeah. the difference was fairly significant, um, let's say, a year ago even. Yeah. But now, amateur boxers, you're not wearing head guards yeah. in senior tournaments. Yeah. You're also um, uh, not wearing the vests anymore. Is no. that right? I'm not sure. I think the WSB, you don't wear vests. But in amateur tournaments, you still wear vests, um, as far as I'm aware but um and the point scoring of course yeah. has changed as well yeah. you've gone to the professional code of the 10 must system yeah um as an amateur boxer do you, what views do you have of that i mean is it good for you or bad for you i think, think i think it's um beneficial for amateur boxers to have that because most amateur boxers have dreams of becoming professional boxers and winning titles so it's good to have that transition made a little more easy by the point scoring system being similar to the professionals because it teaches you, you know what I mean, stuff about how to win rounds as a professional. To win them as amateurs time and time again puts you in good stead. So stuff like fitness, um, dominating rounds, strength, all those things are now starting to play a part. As well as stuff like um, knockdowns and other things like that playing a part because it, it, it does help you a lot in terms of turn professional also the not wearing a head guard is also positive because not only does it give you better range that you can better see range of vision best range of vision where you can see the punches come in react better it also um the taking of the shots it's not so much of a shock when you turn professional because you've done it time and time again as an amateur so it does help i think i think it's a, it's a positive thing so we've talked a little bit about amateur boxing yeah what are your goals within that? Um, I hope to get into the GB setup, and GB being GB Great Britain Boxing. It's um, the yeah where they, the boxers from there are usually selected to go to international tournaments, and obviously I I like to get to the top of anything that I'm doing, and to prove that you're at the top of amateur boxing in Britain, you have to get onto that setup because it's you're established, you're known. And um, it gives you the opportunity to do stuff like Olympics and represent not only yourself but your nation on a global on a global scene. So um, that's definitely one of my main aims. But to get there, you have to allow yourself to be known. So I want to get as many high quality fights in, win, and also stuff like the ABAs, it's the um, Elite Boxing Championship of England, and um, win that. And then that gives you a good something to show that you deserve to be on the GB setup. So that's definitely the main aim I have. So the main aim yeah. is to get onto the GB set up yeah. and represent GB at the Olympics? Absolutely, yeah. The next ones? The next ones, if if possible, 100%, yeah. How far away from that sort of dream are you at this I point? I believe that um, an ABA title puts you right at the front of it because it's quite a fair system they have in this country and if you show that you are the best, you will be given opportunities that you deserve. So I just have to prove not only to myself but to the bottom world that I deserve that and then hopefully it will be presented. Okay well we alluded to this a little bit early, we talked about studies, yeah. now you're an amateur boxer hoping yeah. to make it all the way to the top of the amateur and who knows maybe even uh, 
a future professional boxer. Yes. Your weight division is as amateur heavyweight, heavyweight yeah. which means for the uh, viewers from the professional world of boxing, that's cruiserweight yeah. really at this yeah. point. But you're yeah. a young man. How old are you? <laughs> I've just turned 22. So who knows what the future yeah. holds? Probably in the back of your mind, you're <laughs> expecting that you'll end up being a heavyweight following the footsteps of someone like David Hay, possibly. Yeah. Um, but we've alluded to your education. Now, you're not uh, just a boxer. T tell the audience a little bit about your education too. Um, I also go to university, um, the University of East London. I do psychosocial studies, which is a subject that's a mix of sociology and psychology. And um, I'm a sports scholar there, so I'm given strength and conditioning, nutritionists and other stuff to help with my amateur boxing, as well as allow me to get a degree and go on that route as well. So you're a great believer in sports science. Yeah, absolutely. So you're more of the going to uh, sort of the movies, looking at the Rocky movies, you're more <laughs> in the mold of an Ivan Drago than a yeah. Sylvester Stallone yeah, if Rocky. I'm honest, if I'm honest, I'm, obviously I do appreciate and understand the importance of boxing circuits, but the work that I do in strength and conditioning, I see the improvement in myself in stuff like explosiveness, and physical attributes of my size for the same weight um, because sort I'm... Sort of power to weight ratio exactly, and things like that. Exactly, because you can build up amazing endurance and stuff like that through the traditional bots and circuits, but obviously we're now in this century where we can see the benefits of strength and conditioning and um, I've seen how it's affected other people and myself and I'm a firm believer in um, sports science. Did you... Um, uh, do you actually measure electronically on computer or whatever the change in your performance at yeah time? um now, now that i've started seeing a dietitian as well um they measure my body fat and everything like that before i start like a training camp to get down to my weight and be fat and ready and then they check it when once i'm getting close to the time and you can see not only in the way it looks but in the numbers because the numbers can't lie so you do see the change in yourself and the positive changes so um, since I've started strength and conditioning especially at my university with a strength and conditioning coach um, you s I've just seen a massive improvement in my performances 